Hello to all the meeps and bubbles and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Let's Play. Right now we are following Ellie on her way to the Great Hall so she can stuff her face with the delicious barbecue they will cook for her. Weirdly though, she brought her own. You too, Rowan. Betrayal. Let's recap what we did in the last episode. As you can see, we built a cooling system for our second food storage up here in the space biome. The duplicants got a beautiful living quarter as you can see, also a fancy mess hall with a sweepy. The research got moved to the top of the pyramid. The food storage got a little bit of chlorine and we added a little bit of water to the steam chambers of our power system. As you can see, it doesn't really need to run because we have enough power at the moment. We also started a second power shaft as you can see here. To finish our pyramid we are missing two important rooms. First the recreation room, which is kind of easy, we just need a recreation building. I wanted the arcade cabinet and I'm going to place it right here. We need a little bit of decor, so maybe one of those fancy statues. Ah, no, our refined metal is kind of sparse at the moment, so I'm going with the granite one. Also, you know me, plants. Okay, let's stop it right here. Now we need power for that thing. It eats up 1200 watts, so maybe we just do the same thing as with our transit tube access points. I am placing the wire to the right so it is closer to our large sculpting block. Okay, let's see if that worked. Nice, we got a recreation room and this building gives us plus two morale. Okay, not the best, but still fine. Just out of curiosity, how's the jukebox doing? Plus two morale and only plus 1000 DTU, so one kilo DTU. Well, that seems better and even more duplicants can dance around this. So what is the benefit of this one? Plus two and four kilo DTU, so that is a massive heat production and only two players can play at this. But, uh, well, you know, it's kind of cold here, that's why I placed it there. But maybe we need a second recreation room so all the duplicants are happy. Now, next thing, duplicants will need a bathroom. So why not place one down here? I'm just going to use the transit tubes and go through the wall right here. Then we're going to need a transit tube access point and hook it up to our electronic grid, maybe from below. Why not like this? We can deconstruct this, we don't need this anymore. And hook it up to this cable. Yeah like this. Okay, now we can hook up the cable and the duplicants will need access to this, so let's deconstruct that tile, place a ladder and one of those fire bolts. The next thing, the duplicants will need a lavatory. I want this to be fancy, so two spaces in between and another lavatory, then again two spaces in between, then a sink and another sink. This nicely lines up with this room and in between we can place the genius marble sculptures. Well, they're only genius if Mima works on them. Then we need to deconstruct those tiles and drywall the rest out. We don't need a drywall, but it's fancier. Let's continue. Guys, I'm having a problem with the duplicants bringing their food from wherever they came from. Why aren't they taking the food from here? Maybe the door prevents them from reaching across. They just can't pathfind to there. So I'm going to do what you assumed in the comments. I'm going to deconstruct that tile and placing the door over the nafta. Hopefully that works and will not destroy my food storage again. Let's quickly save. They all brought their own food. Seriously. Come on, guys. There's food. Ah. Here I was contemplating how I can deconstruct the background tile and place down the door without having to refill the nafta again. To be honest, I have no clue. So let's mop this up so maybe you can save this. And then deconstruct the drywall. Place down the door. Place down a bottle emptier drop it down again and add the chlorine again. Bird. Mopping first. Then deconstructing. Bird! Those dupes. And now Bird wants to place... No, picking up granite. That's okay. Pick up the granite as much as you want. Not my nafta. They picked up my nafta, didn't they? 
I look away for a couple of seconds and there's oxygen in there. Well, that's actually kind of good because I don't have to add more chlorine. I just have to construct one tile there. So let's just do that. I can't construct a tile because they are background tiles. I hate that you not simply can't build over them. In the background, you can see the dupes finally building the bathroom. And you can also see that absolutely no one is building the bottle amp here. Who did we catch here? Gene. Gene was transporting some meal eyes. So why did the meal eyes end up here? Let's follow Gene for a bit. Well, wrong button. Gene uses our pipe system and slides down the pole, runs through the Draco. Ah, the Draco ranches. The Draco ranches passively produce meal eyes and the meal eyes get picked up by the auto sweepers. The Dracos eat the plants itself, not the meal eyes, so there is leftover meal eyes every 12 cycles or so, and the auto sweeper picks it up and sends it to our different storages. That's where the meal eyes is coming from, by the way. Future me here, I'm not sure that I realized that at this point. Okay, back at the top. Dupes still did not build that thing. No, they did. Let's see, where's my nafta? Let's drop some nafta here. Ape, you're kind of green, slime lung and hungry. Yeah, go be hungry somewhere else. So, Gene is delivering nafta. Hopefully it's a cold one. At minus 14 degrees. Check. Okay, let's do this the right way. I skipped the D and reconstruction of the background tiles here. Nice, Joshua picked up food from here. Where's my bleach stone, by the way? Ah, this again. <laughs> Every time. We also finished some research, so let's go for the next one. We could go for the high velocity transport. We only need the yellow tier, which is the material tier, I guess. Yep. Or for something completely different. No, let's just finish this. There we go. A lot of bleach zone got delivered. There we go. And the bleach zone has to go, guys. Okay, let's look for the bleach zone. Did they already pick it up? Very nice. Okay, back to the bathroom. I just noticed we don't need a transit tube crossing right here if we also have an airflow tile. So because we want the airflow, we want our carbon dioxide to accumulate here so we can skim it later, we can uh, make this air gap a little bit bigger. So just like this. Also, I don't like the transit tube crossings. They're kind of in your face and those are more... Um, those are more decent, I don't know. After the food storage finally has been taken care of, we can take care of the piping in the bathroom. Therefore, I'm connecting all the inputs and the outputs. The pipes have been planned and now they have to go into a sieve somewhere. Let's first bring them down a little bit. Let's dig this up. Maybe we got space for a filtration room. The dupes are making quick work of the natural tiles, so I guess we have enough place for a water sieve and a liquid reservoir. If we switch over to the right, we can see the dupes finishing the pipe system for the bathroom. Oh, did I miss our printables? Let's see, what do we have here? A tiny poker shell. Nice. But if we get a poker shell, we need to place it somewhere else. If it grows up and lays an egg, it will punch our duplicates and our critters. Let's print it. So we got a hovering poker shell right here and we can wrangle it. Very nice. Now we just have to build a stable for it. Oh, guys, we could just put our poker shell in our filtration room so it can eat the polluted dirt and produce sand out of it. But this one is kind of cramped. So either I drop it in there wild and do not care for it with one of those grooming stations or I'm going to place it in the new filtration room. Let me think about that. Okay, I thought about it. We can drop the poker shell in here because it got enough food in there already. In the other room, there is not enough food at the moment and we need a long time to get such amounts of dirt in there. So I'm going to deconstruct this ladder, place down one more mesh tile after I picked up the sandstone, otherwise it will bother me. And then build one more critter drop off. Also we will need a door, otherwise the poke shell could escape. I'm going to build it here. We built the necessary parts and now we can set the critter drop off to poker shells and poker shell spawns. We probably don't need to place down a critter feeder because we have the polluted dirt right here. It is at 5 tons. Why is the polluted dirt here? Because probably I set the storage to sweep only or the storage is full. Let's check. Storage is not full. The pip threw a little bit of it out. Let's check for the germs. Uh, here. Oh, nice. Floral sand. No germs. Oh, that is not nice. What happened here? From 5 to 50,000 germs, there's everything in there. Probably because of the polluted water from the metal refinery room. Let's see if we counter this or just not care. Can body buds grow in hydrogen? Probably not. 
Nope. The good thing is that our base is so flooded in floral sand that the outlets here, like this, or like this one, can't let the slime lung through. Oy, oy, oy. Okay, we got a lot of slime lung in it. the right part of the base. Uh, the rest is pretty clear as it seems. Let me zoom out more. Slime lung here, here, everything to the right is slime lung. And uh, floral sand up here. That's nice. We could place down more airflow tiles so that the floral sand from the body butts spreads down to our mess hole. And yes, I'm using mess hole and great hole interchangeable because um, that's just how my brain tries to work. There we go, look at our cute little poke shell. Ah, amazing. Oh well, I didn't expect them to be finished already. They actually finished the power shaft. There are a couple of tiles missing. Let's just add them right here so the dribblings can use the tube later on. Sorry sweetles, this gotta be finished. Now for the water filtration system, let's quickly come up with something. Let's see, place down a floor, then we will need a water sieve. Refinement, water sieve, I'm going to flip it with the O button. The pipes and the power cables can now be hooked up. Let's just run them like this. Bridge it over here and deconstruct unnecessary cables. Let's see who will get trapped. No one, nice. Okay, now we will need a liquid reservoir. Let's place it like this, connect up the pipes and um, feed it back to those pipes. Wait a second, in order to be able to bridge over those pipes with our main pipe system, we have to reroute it a little bit. That's what you can see me doing right now, so that our main pipe system can be extended. After that has been taken care of, the overflow can be placed down. What I mean when I say overflow, if this pipe is full because of all of our toilets have enough water, then this will bridge over to the second bridge, which is just there to give a direction. Then we are going to use this pipe and feed it back into our cleaning system. Maybe for now I'm just going to place a new pipe here. Drop it in, bridge it over, deconstruct those tiles. And I'm going to deconstruct this bridge here so that our fresh water gets dropped in our tank. Dupes are slow again. I go get another tea. I'll be back. Oh, you did it. Very nice. Pip, what are you doing there? Get out. Can pips plant in neutronium is the question. Probably not, but why not test that? Let's deconstruct those tiles. Then I wanna drop the pip here and let's see if the pip can be of use to us. Also the pip will need some seeds, so we will need a storage bin. Also a door that the pip can't escape. Let's just go with this one. I never let the pips try to place anything in neutronium before, so that's new to me too. Now we have to set the critter drop off to pips, the storage bin to thimble reed seeds and check if the temperature is in the growth range of thimble reed. He brought a seed, but not a pip. There's the pip. Pip, could you not do this? Mima, you did a great job, but only half of it. Could you just pick it up? Follow the pip. <laughs> there it is. You don't have to place it in there again. I can deactivate this now, so the dupes don't have to run back and forth. And let's wait for the pip to do anything. Or better, come back and see if the pip did anything. Alright, oh, while we are here. This is at 500 degrees again, because every time I load the game, this lags and the door is closed, so I'm going to give this a manual switch so it is open when I want it. So when I save the game and close this, I can safely assume that this won't heat up the next time I load it up. Let's see if this still works. So the battery is getting low, we have a green signal coming here, but a red signal coming from the timer. So maybe we just set the timer to a lower value, like 60. There we go, because we have the safety measures here and it should only activate if we really need the power. Our pip sadly did not plant anything, so this probably does not work. I could place the pip here, but this is slightly over the temperature for the thimble reed and the temperature here is slightly under the temperature for the seed. We got this beautiful steam vent here, which produces a lot of water that we are not using at the moment because I did not want to deal with that before. So now, how about we try something like this. The automatic door and the temp shift plates are there to transfer the heat from the cold biome into the metal plates that are above the steam geyser, so that the steam condensates to water and we can suck it up with a pump and use it again. Now we can place down a little bit of piping or we use the existing one. No, I don't want to use that because it is not insulated and 
and I don't want to cool the base with the cold water from the geyser. Huh, that is the question. Will the water be cold or not? Better insulate this. The dupes are now getting rid of the old uninsulated pipes and deconstruct the cables as well. And then the dupes can connect up the pipes with the main pipes in our power shaft. The dupes cannot reach the pipes in this specific arrangement, so we can place down a couple of ladders to help them. Now we just have to wait for them to finish. The piping has been built and now we can connect it up to one of our transport pipes. Better use the one that goes directly into the infinite storage, this one. So we can connect that one like this, better deconstruct that tile too. And then bridge it over with a bridge like this. We also need power. Let's use this cable right here. And deconstruct that cable. How's the temperature coming? Very nice. Emitting steam. Overpressure. Overpressure is bad. I jumped ahead a little bit because I tried to get rid of the mixed gases that were inside of the steam geyser chamber. And since that did not work, here the second try. Nikola is constructing this right through the wall. Very useful at the moment. Bert, can't you get out here? Then just build another ladder. So this should work. Maybe we put a hydro sensor right here. And hook it up. Like this. We got a little bit unlucky and the steam geyser started to vent. <laughs> now we have water here. <laughs> and still oxygen in there. Oh come on game, sometimes. On the top you can see that I couldn't be bothered anymore, I just went with it. Let's take a look at the water. Our water is being transported downwards into our infinite storage. Very nice. Speaking of water, our water sieve does not have any water as well as the liquid reservoir and our bathroom because we did not put in any and there's a reason for that because as you can see we are at minus 21 degrees celsius in our lavatory which is kind of cold so everything would freeze. So before I got that pretty warm I'm not filling in any water for now but we could build the showers. Here can go a wall so one two three four showers right there. Place on another door and the walls. And we could make this prettier by placing down Mabel statues in between. Then we need to space it out and place on the statues, like this. All these doors could be left open, by the way. Let's do that. This not, this will be needs to stay in there. It is nice to see the dupes work together in unison once in a while. You can also see Mima producing some beautiful art in the background. For the piping we could just continue what we started on the left. Here I decided to place the pipes in the walls so they are not so visible anymore. There are a lot of duplicates that collect mealwood in our storage here and transport it down. So there has to be a source of mealwood that is automatically picked up and transported up here. And sometimes you can see dupes transporting fish, but I know where this is coming from. There you see it again. Picking up fish and taking it with them downstairs. So back here at our old food storage, we got Travaldo cooking again. He probably is making cooked fish, which is 1600 calories instead of paco filet for 1000 calories. But the duplicates like the paco filet better, it has a higher quality. At this point, I did forbid Travaldo to cook the fish, so only the raw fish is going to be eaten. But I still hadn't figured out where the meal ice was coming from, so I just deactivated the automation pickup so the dupes have to deliver it. Ruby gaining a skill point from sleeping again. Nice. More gold amalgam. We need that. Guys, do you see what I see? I figured out I built that out of copper ore. That is not very smart. So before that thing turns into steam, we can dig up this tile and fix that quickly. Therefore, I have to deactivate this. I'm going to do that by using the sensor here. I'm going to set this to only turn this on if this is above 100. Now we can rebuild this out of steel. Oh, that was all of our steel. We need to produce more. And while we are at it, why not construct a tile right here? Can the duplicates reach this? No, they cannot, sadly. Ah, that. and I can't reach this, so that was unnecessary. Come on Ellie, pick this up before you go. Or let Mary do it. Now that we got it fixed, we can set the sensor again to the right temperature. Nice, our gaming station is being used. 
and fitting to that the botanical analyzer. For now we will need more refined metal, so I'm placing down our buck refinery setup and then I'm going to send one duplicant who is actually capable, not Gene again, to the other planetoid. Before we replace the metal refinery again, I'm going to insulate our cold spike made out of granite a little bit better, so that the water can condensate over the whole area. Those duplicants are idle again. Let's give the dupes a little bit of busy work. We got a lot of shine bugs. They produce eggs. We could use the eggs in something that produces solar power or radiation, like this. The radiation can be used for our research station. Let's see what I come up with. <laughs> okay guys, so far I have the following idea. We're going to place down some solar panels, as you can see here, a little bit of glass, and I'm going to drop a tiny drop of naphtha right here. The X for the shine nymphs will land here. We're going to place another one of those tiles right there, then that will be a tiny liquid lock, like here. And then we can manually or automatically drop in the X with a conveyor loader, like so. A little bit of a rail and a conveyor chute. Hey, what did you deconstruct? You didn't just deconstruct the tile. Ah. There was probably more than that. A cable. Ah, oh, we could use that. And then we need to hook this up to our main power grid. For the power cable I was using copper. I did forget to set the priorities for the cable higher than for the solar panels. That's why I had to reconstruct them again. Okay, now we can drop down the nafta. Ellie's bringing the nafta, so we have to stop right there. Ellie, how much nafta do you have? Load it in. That should be enough. One more tile, right here. Let's set the conveyor loader to the critter X that we want. We want the Shine Nymph X. The duplicants will pick up the Shine Nymph X from all over the place, so they may pick up those. Yeah, it's not very important. Let the dupes do what they want to do. So I'm going to set this to right, this to right, and then this will shoot that way. And we can place down one of those stations. Oh man, it is way too big. I gotta place it somewhere else. Yeah, I'm going to place it right there. Let's deconstruct that tile, just that tile. I jumped ahead a tiny bit here because the duplicants were doing everything else but not what they're supposed to do. But now they should be finished with this honestly very unnecessary building. <laughs> okay, the dupes built everything in here, except for the tiny spot right there. And I'm going to expand the wall a little bit downwards so we can have our steam shaft again. Then we will need the metal refinery, make it out of probably ceramic, place it right here. Maybe one closer. And we already have the broken pipe pieces in place. Very useful. Then we will need a connection to the water that we are going to use. For now we are going to use the polluted water because we just have more of that. Also the polluted water will turn into steam condensate and we have clean water after that. The exact piping route and what goes where is not really important. You just have to know that the polluted water is being used. How about iron ore to iron forever? And we are going to set this to a high priority. After the duplicants added the missing tiles, I quickly checked how much refined metal would be needed to place a conductive heavy watt wire throughout the base. By the way, we managed to trap the Draco. So maybe we save it before we go. You did this to yourself. Thank you, Frankie. In order to give the duplicants a little bit more busy work, I let them dig out this mess down here. I wanted the duplicants to only work in Atmos suits when they are down there, so I restricted the door access, but I overlooked the missing tile underneath the door, so that did not work. Okay, the duplicants are busy now, so let's first see what's printed in sand. Well, okay then, let's print this on a Vista. Now, which duplicant are we going to send over? After a way too long monologue that my editing me was kind of bored about, I finally decided on Joshua. He got his tiny adventurer hat, and then we are going to send him off. Joshua had his night dress. Hey, don't run away from me, Joshua. And now he's on his way to the other planetoid. And teleport. There we are, and Joshua's invisible. Nice, there he is. You did see him invisible too, did you? Let's quickly check what we need to do for Joshua. Joshua has a moral requirement of 18, as you can see in his skills right here. Joshua with a moral need of 18. So we can activate this thing so Joshua can eat the good barbecue that we can then send over, hopefully. What are you doing, Joshua? Ah, he's storing food. While you're here, you could wear one of these cool vests, but 
at those temperatures that may not be the best idea go to that thing and activate it he needs to be a field researcher for that so field research for you joshua now he has a moral need of 21 maybe we need to moral scrub him like seriously and this time ramps you can follow my hopeless attempt to get joshua to freaking press the button the problem is that this uh, interdimensional transporter has no priority Meaning I can't assign priority 9 or so to it. That's why I set all of Joshua's priorities to the same level and checked if I activated that thing on the other planetoid. It is not priority 3, seriously. Uh, let's see, how about... Now, Joshua. Now it's priority 1. Finally. Back on this planet, we are on the side where we can put in the stuff that Joshua will receive. So, for now, we can put down a conveyor loader, connect it up with a rail, we are kind of out of materials already. Then what else are we gonna send over? First connect this up to the power grid. Easy. And let the duplicants build this. I tried to automate or limit what I was going to send over, but that did not work because I had no metal for that. So Frankie just delivered all of our barbecue. I cut a little bit of footage where I got angry at the dupes, but you can see my reaction when I saw the barbecue on the other side. Oh, they sent over everything. And as for now, I probably can't send it back. Here, I could send it back. And where's the receiver? No, that's that's a rocket. Here. Okay, so we could send it back. I am first going to build the drop point on the receiver. Go back to Easter. Before we activate the machine on this side, it is time to store the barbecue that we got here in our already cold food storage. Let's deactivate the barbecue, otherwise I send over more. And let's set this to glass. And deactivate this for now, so we only have 1000 kilograms in there. Nice. Since this took longer than expected, Joshua was sleeping and eating, so I changed his allowed food sources to barbecue only. And we also had to give him another skill point for hard digging. He needed that to get through the abyssalite. So let's check the temperature. Temperature is at minus 13 degrees. That's not enough, but it will cool down, I hope. And we have carbon dioxide. Nice. Now I know how I send over the barbecue that I do not want here. I'm going to disallow everything that I do not want at the moment, like everything except for the barbecue. 10 kilogram of barbecue here. Everything else can stay on the floor and then we can sweep it up and send it over. Let's see, there he is. So store 10 kilogram of barbecue. He did that, sweep that and everything that is swept we can send over. Now allow manual use, sweep only and barbecue. Hook it up to the grid, done. And our barbecue is being sent back. If the conveyor rail wasn't blocked, this again. You go there and you're not allowed out. Back on the main planetoid, our barbecue arrived. And now we gotta save that very quickly. Allow the manual use for the barbecue storage high priority. And go. Ah, nice. We are back to 300,000 kilocalories. Let's see, while we are here, why not the durable life support? Also, our Exosuit Forge is running low on reed fiber, as you can see here. We only got two reed fiber left. That is kinda dangerous regarding our situation right now. Because the dupes need a lot of reed fiber to repair the Atmos suits when they were here. So in order to fix it, I'm gonna show you something neat. First, we will need a wall right around here. Another wall with a one tile gap right next to it. And if we deconstruct the rest, maybe even a third wall. After that, we can place down some mechanical doors made out of any metal that you have left over. I'm not sure about the arrangement on the top left, but let's try it this way. When the storage bin has been deconstructed, we can place down a ladder, wait for the duplicates to finish this, and then maybe we can place the critter drop of one to the right, so we have space for one more of those. Okay, now to the important part. Let's deconstruct the doors. Okay, the top one did not work, so let's try with the next one. As you can see, we just created a natural tile made out of the material that we used to build the door. We also trapped the pip, so we gotta do that again. If you haven't already, you probably get now what I was aiming for. I was creating natural tiles here. And now the pip has a place for the thimble reed. And we also, for some weird reason, got long-haired slixers down here, where our regular slixers should be. The regular slixers probably laid an egg for the long-haired slixer and then there was no carbon dioxide and the only slixer that survived down here was this one. They look kind of nice though, but their only benefit is being pretty. They give off a small decor buff, but they can't produce crude oil or anything else useful. Okay, how much oxygen do they eat? Properties. 
<laughs> they have a melting point of 9700 degrees. <laughs> 30 kilograms a cycle. That's one third of duplicants. So we just have some useless long hair slicks down here, but they are cute to look at. And they don't even consume oxygen because, well, there is no oxygen here at the moment. So they should probably be dying and unhappy. But it's happy, idle, and wild. So maybe we just leave it at that. Back to the annoying pip and annoying duplicants. Build this, deconstruct this. I don't have time for you, shenanigans. I need to go and take care of Joshua. He is pretty helpless. In case you were wondering, I reactivated one of our bug refineries so the duplicants can produce a little bit of iron. I set it to iron ore to iron for infinity and we are using depleted water. Our oxygen went down from over 1000 kilograms per tile to 620 kilograms per tile, but still enough for our base. Now we can send over some glass for Joshua. Let's start with the 1000 kilogram and then let's check what else he will need. This allowed a manual use. What did I tell you, Bert? Also, we have a slight problem with the temperature right here. Because the duplicants were using the cold dirt that they were getting from here. Our farms are quite cold at the moment. So maybe we have to heat them up with one or the other method. The glass has been sent over. So let's check back with our stressed Joshua. You can see already at 56%. Let's see what's printed. We got a tiny amount of medication against germ-based illnesses. Maybe that can come in handy for Joshua. Since Joshua definitely will be more stressed in the future, I'm going to prepare for that. So he's getting a massage table in a tiny room and a plant. <laughs> Joshua, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst possible place for you to be in. Oh, we got a lot of Paku. He's probably got yeah hypothermia and yucky lungs and he's stressed. That's not going to get any better in the next cycles. I think this is going to take a while. So we're gonna be back when Joshua is under 67%. The next thing that Joshua probably needs is a little bit of plastic. So for now we're going to send over 1000 kg of plastic, allow the manual use, deactivate the thing and wait for the duplicants to deliver the stuff. Oh, that was quick. Send it over. Look at our amazing pip. Already planted three thimble reeds. Nice. We could get one more in there. Or maybe a couple around here. This isn't a park at the moment. And uh, we could make parks easily that way. At this point I decided to industrialize the production of the thimble reed a little bit more. So you can see me placing down orders for doors and a critter drop off. Before we build this, let's check on our dupe. Still stressed at 66%. Let's build this. Also, why are the coal generators running? This should not happen. Let's set the high threshold of those to 20 and a low threshold to zero. Before they start up, our system right here should start up. We just had to change the values. Capture critter. So now we can deconstruct all of the doors and create some natural tiles. Yeah, expected that, but I wanted to try it. So an open door won't work. The pip is already planting, very nice. After taking a quick look at Joshua's stress level, it is still at 66%. There's no way that a massage table can take that away. The next possible solution would be to skill scrub him. If his moral requirements are low, he doesn't get stressed so easily. So let's just hook this up and wait for Joshua to build it. Get Joshua to do it and then wait over half a cycle for him to feel like building it. Nice Joshua. You don't have to be sad anymore. It's time for you. Get in there. This takes almost a whole cycle, if I correctly remember that. I skipped the whole cycle here where Joshua was shaken, not stirred, and then gave him the order to place a heavy watt wire made out of cobalt ore. So we can finally build the solar panels on top of this planetoid. Because his building speed and carrying capacity is underwhelming, I gave him a couple of skill points again. Okay, Joshua is trying to annoy me, so I'm going to take a look at what is printed. Back to Joshua reluctantly building stuff. Joshua is being a real eyesore because he's so freakingly slow. That is why I'm back at our geyser. Here you can see me building a metal spike that will transfer the cold to the top of the geyser. Then I check for the gases and you can see for yourself that we have now polluted oxygen in there. That is because there's a little bit of slime left, so let's pick that up. Add a little bit more insulation and switch over to our digging team, which did some amazing discoveries. We found a neural vessel later, so we can improve one of our dupes with a random nice bonus. And we also found two cool vests and a snazzy suit. 
I think the duplicate that deserves this bonus the most right now is Ruby because Ruby has to suffer so much because of the allergies. Joshua was finally so generous to build our first solar panel on the second planetoid, so we are now not reliant on the manual labor anymore. And with the second solar panel done, this should be enough energy if we place on a couple of batteries to sustain Joshua for a while. A second battery helps store more of the energy. Ruby will be put on the chair and get a tiny upgrade. Let's see what buff Ruby might get. So what do we have here? Ruby got vibrating brain, beefsteak, nice. Ruby got muscles on their muscles, plus 10 strength. Very nice. In case you were wondering what the benefit of strength is, it gives plus 40 kilogram carrying capacity for every point of strength and plus 25% tidying speed. So maybe Ruby is our new tidying dupe. What do we have here? Unnecessary stuff. Okay. I just want to do one more thing before I end this episode and this is sending over some crude oil. But Joshua has to build a really long pipe for that and dig through the oil biome to get that. So maybe we have to defrost a friend and even if we have to let him die afterwards, I don't care anymore. What do we have here? Another Turner. Turner 2. Finally, Joshua and his friend are done for now. They built a really long pipe that you can see right here and it is already filling up with ethanol. The second pipe is there to deliver the clean water to the oil well. You can see it is hooked up to our water sieve and the excess water that we don't need for the oxygen production is sent down. And it snakes all the way through the oil biome until it reaches the oil well. The reason for me dropping the ethanol down here is the duplicates were overheating so I just dumped some 5 degree cold ethanol into our 70 degree hot oil biome. The water is finally reaching the oil well and the crude oil is being sucked up. On the other planetoid I already prepared some liquid reservoirs. One is already full with water, ethanol and a little bit of crude oil. The next one is being filled up. And if you are wondering how long it took for Turner and Joshua to build that little bit of crude oil access, this here is what I use to keep the duplicates busy with a very low priority. So guys, thank you for sticking around and sorry that this took so long. If you like what you see, please give it a like, I would be happy. Also, if you are interested in further information, you can basically check out any of my descriptions and there you will find a little bit more information if it is a short build or the link to the Discord server which I will be working on in the next few days to make it more orderly and newcomer friendly. Love you guys and Luma out!